Good morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Friday, March 29th, 2024. I am Dave Biddle. I'll be joined by Mr. Jonah Booker in just a moment. A lot to get into. Are we buying the Julian Sain hype? A lot of a lot of hype around the young freshman quarterback. Uh, maybe ask us after the scrimmage tomorrow, which the entirety will be open to the media. Looking forward to that. So is Jay Book buying the Julian Sain hype? Am I buying it? Uh, we'll get into much more, but uh, we're going to start the show off talking some quarterbacks. Uh, before we get to that, I want to let you guys know about our sponsor, Manscaped, and a great deal you guys can get. This episode is brought to you by the Spring Cleaning Champions, Manscaped. This season, use Manscaped's Lawn Mower 5.0 and watch your confidence bloom like the springtime flowers. Embrace the season and join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our special offer. Go to manscaped.com and use code BUCKNUTS for 20% off plus free shipping. And spring cleaning doesn't just apply to the nether regions. Get the full grooming experience with Manscaped's signature signature beard, hedger, pro kit, and handyman electric face shaver. Whether you're looking for whether you're looking to craft your signature look or clean up that neckline, these are always the right tools for the job. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code BuckNuts at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code BuckNuts at manscaped.com. Nothing like a little spring cleaning. All right. Nothing like my guy Jonah Booker. Let's bring J Book in here. All right. Are you buying the Julian Sand hype? And I don't mean people are saying he's going to be the starter, but like there's a lot of hype around this young man. I can't wait for the scrimmage tomorrow. It's going to be open to the media. The entirety is going to be open. What do you what, are you buying the Julian Sand hype so far, Mr. Jonah Booker? I'm 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 buying it to an extent, Dave, and here's the reason why. A lot of that chatter is is coming from within the program amongst the players. So the players aren't going to lie about someone who's balling out. So if they truly believe that Julian Sand is out there uh going neck to neck. You got to take it, you know, for what it is, Dave. I don't think it's going to just come out of nowhere if the kid is not out there making plays. So I, I am buying it. Um, the question is, is what will Ohio State do? Will they continue to allow this kid the platform to flourish, to really com- truly compete for the starting job? If so, Dave, <laughs> and I'll ask you this, and I tweeted this out yesterday, if Will Howard – and Julian saying are even going into fall camp. Would you rather go with the six, five veteran or the true freshman who has a higher ceiling? Now this, this question yesterday, day, it got a ton of traction from Ohio state fans. And I wish I would have did a poll because it was almost 50, 50 split with a lot of people making a great case. Now you keep in mind, you're going to Eugene, Oregon, that's going to be a prime time game, night game, probably a top five matchup. Do you take a true freshman on the road for that type of atmosphere, or do you ride the back of the veteran, knowing that you got a an absolutely loaded squad who's probably not going to rattle in a situation like that? Like, I'm curious to get your opinion. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I I agree with. I, I was going to say something along these lines. Just the best player starts, but to your Michael on Facebook, but. Your point is, like, what if it's dead even? Like, I know it's a hypothetical. Is it really going to be 50-50? Like, you got to think one guy's going to be a little ahead of the other. I mean, if it is 50-50 to answer your question, that'd be tough um, because you could – I could look at it two different ways. You could look at it like, well, the freshman is equal with the fifth-year senior. Go with the freshman because he's got the higher ceiling. He's already equal. You got to think he's he's got, you know, a lot more room for growth in a short period of time if he's already equal with the fifth-year senior. Or you Mm -hmm. could look at it like, I need to – if they're – even Julian's not ahead of him. I want the guy with experience. I would probably lean that way. Yeah. Now, I think it's probably not going to happen. They're not going to be dead even. But if they were, I'd probably lean toward the guy that has a lot of experience, especially if Julian's not ahead of him. It's what, the one thing, if Julian's a little bit ahead of him, you're saying, well, I want to go with the guy with experience. Like, no, I want to go with the guy who's better. Like, but if they're dead even, give me the guy with experience. Yeah, and it, it is a hypothetical, Dave. Um, you know, keep that keep that in mind because, you know, they, they are – raving about saying thinking that you know his future is extremely bright the thing is if you're talking about both quarterbacks Dave you look at the schedule the schedule's pretty weak before you head to Oregon I don't see a reason why you can't give both quarterbacks um equal amount of playing time you know you go you go with you know the veteran if that's the the route that you want to choose 
And then at that point, there shouldn't be any reason why you don't get the younger guy some some valuable snaps there. Now, who now you also had to take into account, Dave, you know, if if Julian Sand is ready to play, that right there speaks volume about who he is as a at a quarterback in such a short amount of time. The kid is ready to play. Do you really want to be known as a program that's holding back greatness? Because if the kid is really ready to go and ball out and he's even, you know, with a veteran like that, should you get shit? What does that say to other recruits to say, hey, look, we are a place that is willing to play younger guys if they're ready to play. Look at our quarterback position, the most important position on the field. So I do think there are arguments on both sides of it. Um, I do think some of the talk, you know, as you the initial question, I do think a lot of the talk is real. Um, I, and I know that a lot of the talk is coming from the players who are saying that Julian has been balling out. It's not to say that some of the other guys haven't been playing well, um, but I just think that the buzz is coming from internal from a lot of the guys saying, hey, he's been playing really well. It's also been coming from people who's been visiting practice um, that has been closed off from the media talking about how well he's been playing. But I just think when you got a, a veteran like that with the stakes so high, a national championship type of caliber where everybody's all in, if you're Ryan Day, man, it takes some huge marbles to say, hey, my job, which is potentially on the line, that I'm going to ride with a true freshman. If I was betting, Dave, and you know, if I if I'm to put a grand on it, I would say that the veteran week one will be the one who starts because there's so much at stake with a championship roster. Go with the veteran, but also find time for the the true freshmen or the younger guys to get some time. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I would bet a, a large amount of money that uh, Will Howard will be the starter. Um, when they uh, kick off against Akron. And if he stays healthy, he'll be the starter all season. I hope everybody sticks around. I hope Devin Brown sticks around. I hope Devin continues to push him. And, you know, Julian Sayan continues to push him. Aaron Noland, uh, Lincoln Keenholz. I hope they all stick around. I just find it highly unlikely that all five scholarship quarterbacks are going to stick around, especially in this day and age. Yep. Um, April 20th is going to be absolute mayhem, Dave. Yep. Oh, I know. Josh Pate's warned everybody. So at least at least we're somewhat somewhat prepared for the insanity that he's hearing about from really good sources, by the way. Um, give me your thoughts on the quarterbacks overall. You kind of said like, you, you'd go with a veteran. I agree. And I think that's what Ryan Day is going to do. There's so much they're like going all in on this season. They're not going to start a true freshman quarterback unless he proves he's the guy. Then then he's the guy. But I don't think that's going to happen. Um, how do you feel overall about the quarterbacks, whether it's Will Howard you know, just overall, Devin Brown, Aaron Nolan. How, how do you feel about these guys? Obviously, Julian saying. Right. Well, with the quarterback situation, Dave, this roster is so loaded. You just need a quarterback who's not going to lose you games. <laughs> you just need a competent quarterback who's going to be able to move the chains, keep the offense on schedule, run Chip Kelly's playbook, and deliver strikes to open wide receivers. What was the one thing that Ryan Day was constantly – screaming at, at Kyle McCoy when he came to the sideline. You watch him on the camera. He's yelling like, we got guys open. Throw the ball. <laughs> Throw the ball instead of, you know, checking it down. And that's the thing. If you got wide receivers open, you need a quarterback who's going to be able to step up and deliver. Do they have that in this room? I truly believe that they do have it. Um, I know a lot of people have been writing off Devin Brown. The thing with him, Dave, is the durability is still a major issue right now. You, if you're Devin Brown, his name theoretically should have been right, should be right there in the mix of being the guy that's going to take this job by the bullhorns and say, hey, I know you, you know, brought Will Howard in here to be the starting quarterback, but you know what? It's my time to shine right now. I don't know if you're getting that from Devin Brown right now. The durability is always going to be a question mark that hangs over his head. You really like the true freshmen. You think the guys um, that are coming up on the back end, immensely talented. Lincoln Keyholz, um, I'm still not out on him. I still think he is an incredible talent. I just don't know that he's ready yet coming from the Dakotas. But I think he is, he is someone that's going to be able to provide some depth. So overall, big picture, I do like this, this quarterback room. I don't think everybody's going to be in there after the spring. If they are, then, hey, 
tip of the cap to Ryan Day and Chip Kelly to, you know, to talk to these kids to say, hey, stay here, fight through it, continue to grow, continue to develop. And if that's the case, then, hey, that's beautiful to see. But I, I, I truly believe the biggest thing for me, Dave, when it comes to the quarterback position, just don't lose football games because the roster is so loaded that these dudes should roll out of bed scoring 30 plus points a game. When you have a two headed monster at the running back position, the talent that you have at, at the wide receiver with Emeka and Carnell and Jeremiah Smith. And then you look at the tight end room. Um, they have some able bodies there that's going to be able to do some damage if you give them the opportunity. Just don't screw it up. And that's why I kind of start leaning towards, you know, Will Howard and the veterans as well. Like, hey, just get the ball to the playmakers and let those boys do their thing. Switching gears, two guys whose stock is certainly way up this spring is Caden McDonald and Jason Moore. A couple of second-year D tackles. Caden McDonald with three years of eligibility left. Jason Moore redshirted last year, has four years of eligibility left. I don't know if Jason Moore is going to be here for five years, um, but uh, just throwing that out there. But um, these guys, and it's not, again, this is not like media-driven hype. This is like Larry Johnson like going mm -hmm. on and on about these guys. And we had heard good things about them anyway from their teammates, but Caden McDonald, I love it. 330 pounds moves. Well, flashed a little bit as a true freshman last year. Sounds like he's going to be the first, uh, you know, uh, one tech off the bench. Uh, Jason Moore. I mean, Larry Johnson said he's the ideal three tech in our right. system. Right? Saying that about a uh, red shirt freshman. Then you throw off hero canoe in the mix too. So they got five B tackles, including the two starters with Tyleek Williams and, uh, and uh, Ty Hamilton, but get into Caden McDonald and Jason Moore. I think it's time to get excited about these two young men. Huge, Dave. I mean, it is huge that you have these younger guys like that starting to, you know, really step up. You look at that recruiting class last year, you know, the, a, a lot of people talked about some of the misses that Larry Johnson had. Um, but you look at the guys that are on the roster and if what we're to, if Larry's telling the truth, which there's no reason why we shouldn't believe him, having a 6'5", 300-pound three-tech that they believe has the potential to be really, really good, that's that's going to that's going to do immense things for the rotation. Katie McDonald, another 330. Like you look at the beef on the in the middle of that defensive line, they got some big boys, got some big belly boys. And being able to rotate them is going to do wonders for Ty Leak and, and Hamilton. And what did he say about Hamilton? He's violent. He, I love he, it. Yeah, yeah he, he said he said Hamilton is violent. Um, and then you, you know, as you mentioned, Hero Canoe. Hero was a guy that the coaches have raved raved about. They were really big about how he came on towards the end of the season. So I love what I'm hearing about the defensive line. And then. Um, the Ole Miss transfer too. They talked about they talked about him, Dave. Um, I think Larry said that the biggest thing with him was the baseball. That coming from Ole Miss, playing baseball, being a two sport athlete, they thought that he was um, further behind in his development. So it's going to take him a little bit more time. But they do like what they're seeing for him, and that's Taiwan Malone. And they think that with him focusing. Just on football with his size, another 300 plus guy, they think that his his growth is really going to start taking off now because he was missing those basic fundamentals and the techniques from missing so much football being a two sport athlete. But yeah, Katie McDonald, they, hey, they may get him in there as some fullback <laughs> like they yeah. did in, like they did in a bowl game. But the biggest thing is getting the, the math on Jason Moore starting to really develop. And the, the, real, the thing that really stood out to me, Dave, is Larry Johnson saying he has not had a bad day. Every day has been a good day for Jason Moore. When you hear a coach say that, especially for a young guy, Dave, that is big time because the biggest thing that a lot of kids struggle with is consistency. For Jason Moore to be so young, consistently put, putting together really good days, that's how you get on the field because now you start to earn the trust of the coaches because they can look at him and say, this kid's bringing it. He is bringing it every day that he straps him up, puts the chin strap on, that he steps on the field. And so if he can continue to do that, parlay the rest of this spring into a stellar fall camp, there is no doubt in my mind that you're going to have him on the field. But my goodness, 
six five six six three hundred at a three technique, Dave. And what did and the one thing too, Jason Moore said he thought that he was going to be an edge guy coming out of high school. Yep. And Larry Johnson was the only coach that recruited him that kept it real with him that told him, no, no, your body's going to outgrow. You're going to be a defensive tackle. All the other coaches were telling him what he wanted to hear, saying, hey, you're going to be an edge guy. You're an edge guy. But Larry saw right through it. And Larry told him, this is where you're going to grow at. Your body's going to continue to grow. You're going to be a 300-plus guy um, with your size. And now he's taken to that coaching, fully embraced it, attacked the strength and conditioning room like an animal. And now he's really put himself in position to be a contributor on this roster because what did Ty Link say? We need those younger guys. We need to have a rotation. I don't need to be playing 50, 60 snaps, snaps a game. You need to be able to have those younger rotation pieces coming into play because, as Larry Johnson said, it's a 17 game season. Now, let me ask you this, Dave. Are you buying Larry Johnson saying they're going to have a deep rotation early on and they need to have a deep rotation because they understand that in order for them to get where they need to be with a 17 game season, they need everyone healthy? Are you buying the rotation? Because that's been the biggest knock with Ohio State is they haven't had the rotation getting those younger guys in there. Are you buying it? I am buying it because other than last year, Larry's always used a deep rotation. It's almost like they overcorrected last year because they felt like they rotated too much in 2022. Like, look at the Georgia game. You had times when you had, like, you know, guys out there that weren't your your best defensive lineman in, in key moments. So his history tells me he will rotate. And you look at the schedule, too. I mean, against Akron and, you know, against Western Michigan and Marshall. I mean, I – I don't know in big games if they're going to rotate it maybe as much as they will in those games, but I think to open the season, they definitely will to see what they have. And, and the yeah. quality is so good. We're talking about D-tackle, how deep they can go there with McDonald and Moore and Canoe being backups. Um, I mean, defensive end. And it was cool talking to all those guys yesterday. You mentioned uh, Jason Moore saying that about Larry Johnson. That jumped out at me, too. He was, like, he was the only one that kept it real with me. <laughs> um, yeah. But it was fun talking. We haven't, we haven't interviewed those guys yet. That was the first time with Caden McDonald and Jason Moore. We had interviewed some of the backup defensive ends. We got a chance to talk, talk yeah. with Caden Curry and Kenyatta Jackson. They're loaded at defensive end, too, with the depth. So, yeah, man, it's uh, I, I'm buying it to an extent. Yeah, because Larry has shown he will do that. I, I think last year they just overcorrected. That's just my take on it. All right, the scrimmage tomorrow. What are you looking forward to hearing about the most? I'll be there so you can be texting me, Dave, I want to know about this. And I'll say, okay, okay, Jay, look, I got you. Um, is it seeing how the offensive line holds up against this D line? Like, what, what are you most curious to hear about tomorrow? Yeah, I don't know how they're going to do the offensive line. Are they going to split them up? Are they going to have one-on-ones, twos-on-twos, so that you can kind of get a better feel? If they, you know, if they're mixing and matching guys onto the offensive line, then that, you know, it's going to be hard to get a good read on it. Um, but I will say this, Dave. I think that the situation that you're going to have to deal with is how does the wide receivers look? I'm, I'm curious about the back end of those wide receivers, Dave, because we've been hearing so much about your Brandon Ennis and your Jeremiah Smiths and all of those headliner guys. What about your Keon Grays? What about your Kojos? What about your Bryson Rogers? Like it's important that you, that, that next wave of guys really start to make an impact. Um, I think that's going to be something that I want to hear. Like, are you guys making any plays? That's the that's the big part, because you've got to be able to have a deep rotation at wide receiver. Um, those wide receivers are sunk. That's a position group that definitely needs to step up. And the linebackers. <laughs> how does Sonny look, Dave, at the linebacker position? Um, how does he look out there with, you know, C.J. Hicks, the Gabe Powers, those type of guys? That's going to be something that I'm definitely looking forward to hearing is wide receivers in the linebacker position. If the offensive line are all working in unison, how would those guys actually look as well? Because, um, you know, the defensive line, if they're getting going, <laughs> they're tough to block. We're going to finish the show answering a couple questions. We have a question in, in the queue for Jay Book about Arvell Reese. We have a question from Mika about the running back coach situation. Any update there? So we'll finish the show talking about that. And we'll let you guys know about our awesome sponsor, Nuts.com. Love these guys. As you know, as I've told you guys, I, I 
the chocolate and peanut butter munch mix did not last long in my house. Uh, and the roasted almonds are fantastic too. They're almost gone too. So I'm going to have to re up at nuts.com. Highly recommend these guys and you guys can get a great deal. Nuts.com is your one-stop shop for freshly roasted nuts, dried fruit, sweets, pantry staples like specialty flowers and more. Their wide selection means there is something for everyone. At nuts.com, quality is the top priority. They roast their nuts and pop their corn the same day it ships. So they reached you deliciously fresh. Satisfaction is guaranteed. Can confirm. I mean, you open this up, you can tell that they, you know, they roast the nuts the same day it ships. It's, it's absolutely delicious and it smells delicious. Right now, nuts.com is offering new customers a free gift with purchase and free shipping on orders of $29 or more at nuts.com slash bucknuts. So go check out all the delicious options at nuts.com slash bucknuts. You'll receive a free gift and free shipping when you spend $29 or more. That's nuts.com slash bucknuts. Love it. Just perfection. Bucknuts.com and nuts.com. All right. A couple questions we want to get to here. All right. So oh, where am I at here? Excuse me. There we go. All right. Jermaine, is Arvell Reese taking over at linebacker? Is he still on the defensive line? I saw Jay Book on X talking about him. He's still – he's playing linebacker as far as I know. They might move him down to, to rush end here and there, but he's he repped at rush end last year. Now he's repping at linebacker. He's a think? Mike. I think they moved him to the to the Mike linebacker, Dave. Um, I think he's going to be someone that is right behind Cody Simon at the linebacker position. He is a big boy. What is he, about 6'4", 240, like – just absolutely and can run from sideline to sideline. A lot of talent, a lot of talent. And I love Arvell Reese game day. You know, he brings that Cleveland Glenville toughness to the heart of the defense. Um, I think he's going to be someone uh, that's going to be repping behind Cody Simon. But as of this spring, he's been getting some uh, reps at the middle linebacker position. I like it. Gabe Powers is in there too. Uh, they might be moving Gabe around. Gabe was getting some yeah. reps on Cody at Mike, and and Gabe can play outside as well. So they they've got some interesting depth there. Obviously, C.J. Hicks. We talked about Sonny Styles. You got to think Sonny's going to be a starter. And then they've talked about using some three linebacker sets. That's one of those I'll believe when I see it. You know, I mean, yeah. maybe they'll make it here and there. I don't know. They're talking about yeah, well, we'll have Cody and uh, C.J. and and Sonny on the field at the same time. It's like oh, okay, sure. But I will say this, Dave, before we go into running back. That, you know, we're mentioning so many pieces on the defense um, and the linebackers. I think they spoke to the media this week. And the biggest thing that they said that James Laurinaitis told them that they're going to be rotating those guys. They're going to create some package. It's critical for Jim Knowles in this defense to find ways to get a lot of these guys on the field. It doesn't need to be simplistic to where Cody Simon and whoever the will linebacker is, is on the field. 85% of the snaps and you're in the same looks. There's way too much talent on this roster to be so basic, to be so bland. Jim Knowles has to be creative to say, hey, I'm going to have a package where Arvell Reese is on the field, CJ Hicks is coming off the edge, and I have a rotation with Kenyatta Jackson standing up on one side of the defensive end and just being creative. Like there shouldn't be any reason why this with this much talent that they don't have creative packages to find ways to get a lot of these younger guys on the field. All right, let's cut. Everybody wants to know about the running back coach. I think I think now Ohio State they're they're so sick of getting uh, other running back coaches around the country pay raises <laughs> that they're they're not leaking any information out about who's getting uh, interviews. I don't know. I've my sort. I mean, Demarco Murray. They went after him. They went after Gillespie. Those guys got raises. Um, I don't know. I don't. I, my source doesn't even know who they're going after now, or maybe just doesn't want to tell me. Uh, yeah. But uh, and I haven't really been digging in maybe as, as deep as I should. But uh, are you hearing anything on the running back coaching front? I am not. Yeah, I think that's a lot of running back coach agents that were also leaking that out to the media to get their clients paid. And they were using leverage from Ohio State to get those guys bigger contracts. The one name that's been thrown out there is Markwell Blackwell, the South Carolina running back coach. Um, don't know a whole lot about him, but he's a name that's been out there for a couple of weeks now. He was unavailable to the media yesterday. So a lot of people have been speculating. Um, is that something that because Ohio State's been talking to him? He's a guy that has bounced around from job to job and came over from Texas A&M. I know Kevin Smith, the Ole Miss coach, his, 
He is the name um, that's been circulating as well, running back coach. So right now it's been pretty much on the hush-hush, Dave, about the running back position. The thing about it, though, Tony Alford leaving really put Ohio State in a bind as far as the timing. Um, you know, it, right now it's going to be very hard to pull, you know, your top candidates. A lot of these guys are heavily involved in spring ball right now. There's been some talk out there that Ohio State's only offering a one-year contract to the running back position. Uh, so a lot of a lot of coaches are wanting multi-year deals. Who knows if that's true or not? But I just think the timing of, of Tony leaving really put Ohio State in a bad situation when it comes to trying to get their top tier guys. No doubt about it. I mean, that was just an ultimate <laughs> fu. Um, you know, I mean, he he was mad that he didn't get an extension and uh, yeah. didn't get. He, even got a little bit of a pay cut, I believe. Um, one more right. real quick. We've got some people asking about Pepe Pearson. Bobby on Facebook, get Pepe. Here's the thing. I, I know Pepe, you know, former did a, you know, took over for after Eddie George graduated, took over as a running back for two years, had a really good year in 96 when you know, his junior year, because he had Orlando pace blocking for him. That, that was good. Um, here's the thing about Pepe. I like Pepe Pearson a lot, but like, He's the running back coach at Tennessee State. Do we really think he's ready to be the running back coach at Ohio State? I know he's an yeah. ex Buckeye, but we wouldn't we wouldn't be talking about Pepe Pearson at all if he wasn't an ex Buckeye. I don't know if he's a legit candidate. I don't know. Right. I mean, I still like I still like Scotty Graham, Dave. You know, he's he, he's a name that I that I still still really like the Washington coach. I mean, he's a former uh, Ohio State Buckeye there, and he's someone that I think has you know been in the recruiting game for a for a while. He was over at Arizona for a couple of years coming and has some NFL experience there. I just think that he's a name to keep in, keep in mind. Like, I don't know how legitimate um, he would, how legitimate the, the rumors are that Ohio State's been going after him. But I do think Scotty Graham is someone who's very capable of doing a really good job here. Former Buckeye knows the state um, has NFL experience. He's been a, a college running back coach before if they were to land him, I think he is someone who would come in here and really embrace the rivalry with Michigan. That's the that's the one thing too. And having former Buckeyes on the on the coaching staff is never a bad thing. Yeah, I, I would uh, be perfectly fine with Scotty Graham, big thirty five, coming here as running backs coach. And he he does. He's got like he does have the pedigree, you know, being at Arizona for a while, and then now even though he hasn't coached a game at Washington, following the yeah. coach to Washington. Yeah, that I'm glad you brought him up. That'd be an interesting one. So. We'll see what happens. Coach Day's coaching the running backs now, and uh, you know that's they, there's two big running backs that are going to be uh, visiting this weekend. So they, you know they've got to figure this out somewhat soon, but they're not in a huge rush. Great stuff as always from Jonah Booker. Really appreciate it. Uh, I'm sure you'll be texting me tomorrow morning to get information. I'll be <laughs> back. Um, great stuff from Jonah, and thanks to all of you for tuning into the show. We appreciate that very much. Hope everyone has a great day and a great weekend.